Konnichiwa minna-san, kitsapurusa ni yokuso. These are the two items that I've been working on. Um, the object on the left is the uh, is a totem pole, specifically for the bakamono. Uh, it's on a normal 30 millimeter base, and it uh, you you place it on the table within certain restrictions, and it provides two key to the bakamono hoard card every turn, which is really useful. The item on the right is supposed to be a cavern hole. But I thought a cavern hole was really boring, so I decided to instead make kind of an old dead uh, tree, a little bakamono um, uh, lookout tower out of it with a hole inside where the bakamono is climbing out of and the, the chain there is so they can climb up and down the chain to get up to the top of the tower and down. Um, so I'll talk about each one in detail. Um, I might as well start with the totem pole because uh, that one I'm really proud of. It took a lot of work and a lot of thought. Um, the other one's kind of a lark. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. So um, with the totem pole, the um, I got this on the tripod, so if it's moving oddly, that's why. Um, I started by um, looking at photographs uh, of Ainu totem poles. And the Ainu were the indigenous people of Japan before the migrations from China came over, and, and uh, you know the, what we would <coughs> consider now the, the modern people of Japan emigrated to the island. So uh, the Ainu are really cool. Um, I, I assume the hill tribesmen are based off of the Ainu. Um, but they they look a little Viking to me. Uh, and the Aino did look kind of Viking, but I think the Hill Tribesmen are a little too Viking. I'm not sure. But um, the Ainu are really cool. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what the Hill Tribesmen for the Tengu are supposed to be. So anyway, they made these cool totem poles. And they did do um, designs of animals and things on them. But in miniature, number one, I probably couldn't do that in full size. I'm not a wood carver or anything like that. Um, also, uh, I have to shrink it down to miniature. So what I did was I took a... Uh, where? I don't find it. Um, I basically took a wooden dowel. So you see of, of various sizes. So you see the, the big totem pole is a wooden dowel, that the other half of which I have floating around here somewhere. Um, and then I've got uh, the smaller wooden dowel on the left that I had a little fragment of. And then the, I think that's a skewer on the right. There's, there's, there's the skewer. It's just a regular old uh, skewer for like doing kebabs or something like that. On. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. So there's the wooden dowel. I just used a wooden dowel cheapo thing. Um, a nice one though. It's not, not uh, cheaply made. It's actually a, a very nice straight wooden dowel. And then <clears throat> if you've watched my channel before and you watch some of the hobby stuff, you've seen me do the uh, using a drill like a lathe. So you take, um, I've done some of my Oni horns that way. You take a whatever you want to lathe, whether it's a piece of wood or a piece of brass, wire or whatever you want to put in there, not really wire, but brass rod. And you put it in the drill and then you spin the drill automatically. You have it set to, to run on its own. Or if you're like me and you happen to have a uh, Fordham or some kind of a rotary tool with a foot pedal, you just step on the foot pedal and it runs as fast as you want it to. And then you take a file and you use the file like you would use a, a, a lathing tool and you can put patterns into things as they spin around. And that's exactly what I did here. So, as you see, hopefully the camera will keep up with me moving this thing. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, oh, look at that. That brightened up. 
So I did the lathing on all of these different totems, and these are pretty much straight out of the photographs. Um, you know, they did these these patterns of, of spheres and bands, and uh, and sometimes they had like the little one, you know, where you had a long stretch without anything, then just a couple of bands on top and maybe a couple below. So I made these as close to the real thing as I could, and then I said, okay, there's my little grouping of of poles. Of There's the original Ainu totem poles, because I think the Bakamono are probably going to be too friggin' lazy to make their own totem poles. So what would they do, and what would be better for critters from the underworld than to corrupt something that was made out of love and respect for the land, for the ancestors, for whatever drives the Ainu to make their poles. So I went through, I sat, actually I slept in one day and I just sat there, I think it was a Saturday so I didn't have to get up and I just laid there in bed and I had taken a photograph of the poles when I'd finished them the night before and I was just staring at the photograph trying to figure out, all right, if if the Bakamono were going to desecrate these poles and turn them into something that was truly theirs, what would they do? And I came up with, over time, a whole bunch of different ideas about, well, you could do this, you could do that. And then, of course, you have to run it through the, the, the mental exercise of, well, how do I do that? Do I have the capabilities? Do I have the stuff to do it? And, of course, we were already partially under lockdown, so there was no running out and getting things. I had to make do with what I had here. Um, and then I just did one desecration at a time in sequence, and I kind of built this story in my head as I was creating it. So the first desecration was the uh, Bakamono climbing up to the top of the pole, painting the top green, putting a Bakamono face on it, hammering some ears in out of some scrap wood they found, and essentially turning the top sphere of the, the pole into a, a, an image of their Bakamono deity. And then the second de desecration was a couple of archers and this may have not been a pur purposeful des desecration, but it was just practical. They, they built a little target, and they put it on the idol, and they had a the friendly little competition to see who could be the best archer. So, so they put the little archery target on there. So that was the second desecration. And then the third desecration was the addition of the chains, because they found some old rusty chains, and they realized that this grouping of poles would make a good lookout tower, but shinning up and down the tower um, was too much effort. So they took these chains, they wrapped them around, and then now they had an easy way of climbing up and down the poles in order to, to check out what was in the surroundings. So that was the, the third desecration. The fourth desecration was the leaving of trophies, that is, weapons. Um, the and this is just me, this has nothing to do with anything historical or Bushido, but um, I say that the, the Oni overlords who kind of rule over the Bakamono and kick them around or whatever, don't allow the Bakamono to keep captured weapons. It would, uh, they're like most overlords, afraid of rebellion. So they can't keep their captured weapons, even if they've gotten them fair and square, but they can leave them here at the, sh at the totem pole and as an offering to their gods. And so you'll see that I have a bunch of weapons. Some are stuck into the poles, some are just laying on the ground. And these are all weapons that have been left for the Bakamono, or sorry, for the, for the deity by, by the Bakamono. The fifth desecration, and this is the last one that was, con that was done by the actual Bakamono, is to leave the heads of defeated enemies at the base of the totem, and that's why you see all the skulls at the base of the totem. You actually see an Oni skull at the base of the totem, and that is because the Bakamono are resentful of their, their being lorded over by the Oni, and so they kicked, when one of the Oni got careless and, and got taken out, they, uh, they took his skull and, and put it on here. It looks like I've lost one of his his horn, so I'll have to look at replacing that. Um, but, uh, and those, I think those were done in brass too, come to think of it. So I'll have to, I'll have to build another one. It's not a big deal. Uh, so those were the five desecrations perpetrated by the Oni, or the Oni, the Bakamono. 
the sixth and final desecration is the basically the nature spirits or gods, depending on how you want to interpret them, of the local area that would normally, that these totems would normally be pleasing to or might be dedicated to rejecting them because they've been corrupted so much that, that they are now rejecting them. And that's where you see I have this nice little bird. Let me get that in focus. Pooping on the pole. And that's the official rejection of the, these poles uh, uh, by the nature spirits um, from their original purpose to their, their new purpose. So anyway, that was a really fun project. I liked it. it I just did it on a lark. Um, though I do use for, I do use this totem pole a lot. I use this uh, card all the time. And I was using a 40K Gretchen with a banner. <coughs> um, and I decided that wasn't appropriate, so I wanted to do something else fun. So I like it. It's good. I think it's a good emboss. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is another card. It's, it's the Cavern Hole. And the Cavern Hole is... Basically, it's an alternate way to deploy summoned Bakamono. Now, I'm I'm not exactly sure how useful this is. Um, so, pardon me while I adjust the camera. So, I'm not exactly sure how useful this is. Um, wait a minute. There we go. Get the flag there. The um, you know the the big the the cool thing about summoning, of course, is that you can. Uh, you put the Bakamono, Bakamono you summon in wherever you need them within two inches of whichever Bakamono is, is doing the summoning, quote-unquote. Um, what you can do instead is you can summon them in and I think put them in base-to-base -base with this base, which is a 40-millimeter base, instead if you want to. However, I don't see any restrictions on where you can put this. Now, you have to do a deep dive into the, the rules sometimes because the unfortunately... The, the while the rules are logical, they're not always convenient to find, so you may have the same rules relating to the same thing scattered in different places throughout the book. Um, so there may somewhere be um, rules about where you can deploy this, but, but I haven't, the, at least on the card it doesn't say. Sometimes on the card it'll say, and this, like the totem pole, needs to be deployed within a very specific area. Um, this does not. Um, it's on the right size base, however, it is not supposed to be three inches tall and line of sight blocking and impassable. You know, it's supposed to be a hole in the ground, so, so difficult terrain, otherwise open. Um, but, you know, this is a lot more fun, and we can always just pretend it's see-through and, and doesn't affect movement. You know, if it becomes a problem, I can always just take a 30 or 40 mil base and switch it out, you know, if there's action happening right around this thing. But my idea for it <clears throat> was that, uh, and, and again, this came over time. You know, these, these, some of these ideas, I'm not smart enough to just generate them out of the mill, I have to, or out of the ether. I have to think about them for a while. And I was originally going to do an old rotted tree that was hollow in the center and then um, have them coming out of the top of the old tree. So I went out into my yard, and my yard happens to consist of a, 38 acres of forest. So I went looking for sticks that I could, old dried sticks that I could turn into old rotted trees. And I happened to find this one stick and the, the hole that he's coming out of was put there by God. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, the, this, this tree branch had broken off and it rotted out in the center. So there was a natural hole there. And I thought, man, that's just too cool to let go. So, oh, wait a minute, look at this. Look at this, guys. High tech. Ready? There. Look at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna point. So that's where the guy was. So, uh, so I cut this up. I tried to break it off. I thought it'd be really cool if it was broken off on top. Uh, you know, I hadn't come up with this yet, um, but I couldn't. It was too close to the hole. I was afraid of damaging the hole. I couldn't get this thing to break up. So I just cut it off, and decided I would turn it into a platform. For, for like a little watchtower. So I kind of collected the odd bits that I had. So I, I had this extra old Bakamono guy that I'm not going to use because I got the new Bakamono set with the new sculpts and everything. So I had this guy who would have been probably an archer. Um, but uh, so I'm like, well, I'll just 
co-opt him and make him part of this. So the archers uh, up here on the top, you can see this is the platform where they stay. So what I, what I actually did, you can see a little bit of a rim here, is I took my roto tool and I, I inset this whole top. So this, this, the in, a whole inside of this piece of wood was removed by grinding. Um, and then I found a, a, one of the old, no, one of the companies that I order some of my wood, uh, my laser cut wood um, terrain from, sent me a little bag of freebie stuff and they had some wood bases in there. So I had this wood base that was just the right size to fit in the top. And so I just inset that in there, glued it in, and then I stained it, combination of stains and washes to get it to look the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to stay light so it stood out, but I wanted it to be worn because they're bacamono, they're not gonna wash the floor. So that's why you see a little variety of color on there. Um, I had this little old box and then the bacamono arrow quiver there. So I put those up there and a little bit of extra chain that I had made, a uh, rusty chain. So I just piled that up and glued it. And then I took another little bit of rusty chain and used it. I was gonna try to come up with a ladder, um, but it was just not quite practical. I'm not uh, um, good enough with my hands. My fingers are too fat. I can't do that stuff anymore. Uh, but the single chain, I think, works. It gets the idea across, and it's reasonable. Some but a little bakamono, would, wiry and strong, would be able to pull themselves up the chain, no problem. And I even had this extra back banner. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. So I painted it up uh, green, like the skin color, and then I will eventually put kanji of some sort on there when I find something appropriate. Um, the wood posts are just made out of toothpicks. I happen to have, now I keep toothpicks around, I use them a lot for spreading glue and doing other stuff, but I happen to have these toothpicks, and you probably won't be able to see this, well maybe you will, they're flat topped, but you can see that they've actually, they're actually ornamented at the top, and I thought, wow, that, that's cool, that looks kind of like a fancy fence post of some sort, and so that's, though you don't see the ornamentations because I managed to cover them up, but all the uprights, are, are little bits of those toothpicks that I cut off and, and drilled. Then I drilled holes in, in right at the edge of the, of the uh, flooring and then stuck the toothpicks in and kind of averaged them out. And then the crossbars, all I did was I took a little piece of, of, this is just a craft stick, and I cut it about here, you know, to whatever length I think I needed to make it. And then I have this weird little tool if I can find it. Um, it's just an X-Acto blade, but you can see it's a rectangular X-Acto blade. And so what I did is I took my little, let's see if I can push that back so you can see it. I, I just have, so imagine this is just a little section about like, yay. I put this in like so, and I push it down. And I would split this because it was a short little section. When I put pressure on it, it would split. And that's how I would come up with these little little boards you see here. Uh, excuse me, I would sneeze. Or not. That sounds like a yawn, not a sneeze. Um, so I just glued those on, painted them, weathered them, you know, painted, highlight, washed, just kind of like the standard, the basic three things you can do to make something look good that, that don't take a lot of effort. Um, so I was pretty happy with it once all that was done. I did drill a little hole in the back. There was this little, see this little branchlet sticking out. I just drilled a hole in there that was big enough for the for the banner. Of course, I'm not wearing my glasses, so there's a million to one odds. I'm, oh, there we go. Look at that. So I got that in. That is nice because I can at least adjust it for where I want it, whatever looks good. And then um, when I store this, if I ever have to pack it and carry it, this banner would never survive. So I can just pull the banner out and hide it safely. And then, of course, um, these are, are some of Ben Calvert Lee's mushrooms from Mastercrafts and Miniatures, and I am the mushroom guy, so I had to put a couple of little groupings of mushrooms, use some flock to cover up the seam between the wood. And then the, the Bacamona, this is a kind of a crappy Bacamona paint job. I'll have to redo him at some point, but I was in a hurry. Um, so I just put him kind of with his arm bracing himself. He's trying to wriggle his way out of that hole. So, so there we go. Okay, now I'm good, Steve.
wow, all I have to do is like magic. All I have to do is say I'm going to sneeze and I don't sneeze. So there you go. So that's what I've been up to recently. I really should be painting Bakamono. I have... I'm trying to get a bunch of new stuff done for the channel that's fun and interesting. Um, but I've got... I bought the new Bakamono set because I absolutely love the sculpts. Um, there's the old archer, though. I did manage to put together one old archer so I get my both my pair of archers. I'm going to replace one of my Bakamono spearmen. Originally, I was going to take... Because um, I've got two of the old Bakamono spearmen, and I was going to take one and put them up on put him up on top of the tower. Um... <laughs> But he just looked, he didn't look right up there. Um, so I, I, I'm going to end up with one extra Bakamono Spearman. Um, and I think I have the, the guys with the two sickles. I have an extra of those from the new set. So if you're in America and you want to trade me <laughs> for one of these guys, um, I need one of these guys. Uh, let me know. Or I don't know, maybe I ordered them already. I can't remember if I put an order in for him or anything that. Um, but uh, anyway, so there you go. Oh, and this guy too, whose arm fell off, so I'm going to have to replace his arm. But I'll be working on these. Um, you know, I'm going to try. I've got uh, uh, young pirates are coming to the, the, the channel, so I'll have them back from the painter in six to eight weeks. Really excited about that. I've got wolves coming in. Um, and I'll be doing an unboxing video when they come in, and I'm hoping they'll be in next week. Um, so uh, I'll get, I'll probably get the boys around, and we'll we'll unbox them together, and then I'll build them, and do a follow-up video talking about how they were to build and what they look like and all that. Um, and then uh, Carl, my eldest son, and I, since he's home from college now, probably for the year, um, have decided. I took one look at the new witch um, cult box and just absolutely fell in love with it. And um, to go along with it, because it's a reasonably good match, not that yokai aren't, but the um, the other three models are, I'm getting the, the old box set um, that has the two yokai and the three, I can't pronounce what they are. But anyway... Um, so I've, we've got some cult models coming in, and Carl and I are going to kind of do that army together. Um, luckily for me, Carl's a really good painter, um, and uh, which I'm not sure I qualify for anymore. I think it's a little bit too many miles on my eyes for me to really do what I used to be able to do. But um, I'm, I still can paint halfway decent. So we're going to do that. So there's going to be all kinds of new armies on the, the channel in the next two months. You know, the Bakamono are going to get done. The pirates are going to come back. The, the wolves are going to get painted and the uh, the cult is going to get done so we'll have those four and then my five six carl's seven eight and alec is nine so we'll have just in my family we'll have nine different armies um, which should keep you guys entertained which of course is the whole purpose of it so there you go uh there's my um there's my shut-in update for the day um i've been uh, getting Obviously, a lot of work done, though most of it has just been fun stuff. Uh, I'll be hitting the grindstone and starting the painting on my Bakamono tomorrow. I did get out for a hike in the woods. For those of you who uh, had seen my earlier mushroom videos when I was hiking around in the woods. Um, so Alec and I went out. My, it's my youngest son. And he's been working, doing a lot of work on opening up the trails and stuff like that. And uh, it looks pretty good. So it's nice to be out. I'm going to have to make a point of doing that. Otherwise, I've just spend way too much time sitting in the in the same room either working for work or after I'm done with that working for myself on my gaming stuff so it's good to get out and hike around a little bit all right guys well you guys stay safe um you know keep your heads down don't do anything stupid I mean if if you know the fates conspire against you and you get sick that's one thing but if you get sick because you're doing something dumb uh, and if you're young, you probably aren't really going to care, except that if you're young and you are close to people who are either having health issues or are old, then you could be really risking their lives. And, of course, you don't want to do that. So hang out, game, work on your models, and watch Gets a Palooza.